40 days of prayer. 40 days of breakthrough prayer. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Forty days of prayer. Today is day four, and I'll be sharing with you a quick English summary of the message for today. The title of today's message is Paul's greeting and prayer, and the passage is from Romans chapter one, five to fifteen. And we'll be looking at the church that can change the world. Now, to change the world, it seems very noble and grand, yet almost impossible. That you would need to be someone with an outstanding education or position and be recognized in this world. But you will see today that God calls you and me, the church, to change the world. So today we'll be looking at four key points from the passage to discover what that really looks like and how we can live that out. And here's the first point: be crazy about the gospel. You have to be a little crazy if you want to change the world. And for Paul, who wrote this letter, he was simply crazy about Jesus, and all he could think about was Jesus. His thoughts were captivated by Jesus, and his life showed that. You're crazy about something if you can't get your mind off that, no matter what. And for Paul, this was Jesus. But let me ask you, what, what, what made Paul so crazy about Jesus? And that was the gospel, the good news. That being Jesus Christ, who was fully man and fully God, who bore all our sins, died and resurrected, that whoever would believe in him has become righteous by faith and invited into an eternal relationship with God. It is this good news, this is the gospel, and this is Jesus that made Paul so crazy and completely changed his life. This is number two, know your identity. When we are secure in our identity, we can live a life that changes the world. And here's the first one. We belong to Christ. In verse six, it says, you have been called by God, belong to Christ. The moment we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts as our Lord and Savior, we don't belong to Satan anymore, but now belong to Jesus. This is the second identity. We are his saints. In verse 7, in the NLT version, it says, You who are loved by God are his own holy people. God calls you as his holy people. God calls you holy. Amen. So don't let Satan deceive you. Yes, we may fall over, but that only shows our weakness and need for Jesus. And that's why we wash ourselves each day with the blood of Jesus who makes us clean and so that we can stand secure in the truth. This is the third point, a key point for today is be different. The church in Rome, there were a small group of believers that had no title, position, or anything to make them recognize. They were what's called a minority. However, because of their transformation, because of the power of the gospel working in and through them, a small group of people, these nobodies, did you know that this group eventually changed the entire Rome and made it into a Christian empire? This is the gospel. And this is what the life of a Christian should look like. And this was the church. And this and the church is called to be influential. Amen. But how? How did such a small group of people have so much influence? Was it money, power, or fame from the world? It was none of that. Here it is. Repeat after me. They were different. It's because they were different. They weren't like the rest of the world. The very object of their faith was different. It wasn't in the world. It wasn't Jesus. Their values were different. It wasn't money, power, or fame. It was Jesus. They lived a life of, with a completely different paradigm. It wasn't logic or reasoning or rationale. It was faith. And their source of power itself was different. It wasn't power from the world. It was the gospel. Let me tell you, we are called to be different. Everything about us must be different. So we must stop living it trying to live a nice, Christian, harmless, Christian life. God says, be the salt and light. And that means go bring the dead to life. Go change the darkness to light. And this is what it means to be different. And that's when the church can change the world. I believe you can change the world. The church can change the world. If Rome can change, so could this nation, your family, our church, Middle East and North Africa. And this is because the power of the gospel is alive and it's working. Amen. Finally, when we look at verse 9 to 15, we can see the most important secret with living with power that can change the world. And that is to pray with love. Paul, he says in verse 9, God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your needs in prayer to God. Paul, he's actually never been to Rome. He's actually never met them. But he says that he could not wait to see them. Do you know why we pray? It's because we love. 
Paul, he burned with the love of Jesus inside of him. Paul was so indebted to the gospel, to the mercy and grace of God, and that is the reason why he could pray for them. And this is the love that we need. This is the prayer that God wants to restore. And because this love was in Paul's heart, when he prayed, Rome changed. So when we pray for those who don't know Jesus with this heart, when we pray for Middle East, North Africa with this heart, when we pray, things will change. Amen. When the church prays, when the church has the power of the gospel, we can change the world. So to wrap it up, I just want to declare, I declare that the gospel that was once just a story in our minds will become a transforming power in our lives. I declare that we'll live by faith and stand firm in our identity as God's holy people. I declare we'll be different from the world. I declare we'll live with influence. I declare that we will pray with the love of God. I declare that our church, history church, will be powerful once again and will change the world. Amen. God bless you.